So our next presentation is going to be by uh, Sharif Awad from uh, Nokia Nuaj, from Nuaj Networks, and uh, he's Chief Solution Architect. He will be talking about the use case for Universal Service Edge. Is it there? Do you want to use this or you want to use the hand mic? I'll use the mic, I think. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Just a moment. Just for presentation now. Sorry, I forgot sure. to do that. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the talk. I know I'm standing between everyone and lunch, so I'll oh, there's another one. Okay, so I'm not uh, I'm not on the hook for lunch. Uh, I'll start, try to make it interesting. Uh, this presentation is a bit different uh, than probably what we've seen so far. It's kind of a new way to do SD WAN and SASE. So it's a new approach that uh, we haven't seen in the industry before, and we just wanted to share it with you today at the conference. Okay, so the presentation is the case for the Universal Service Edge. So typically, um, in, in the current, current model, um, SD-WAN services are delivered from the branch, right? From the branch or from the data center. And you do this by putting an SD-WAN gateway. And this gateway will do basically all the network functions. And this has been a good approach, right? It's transport independent, it's dynamic, uh, you know, self-service, automation. Uh, it's, it's not, we're not here to, to criticize current <laughs> SD-WAN model. But we're here to say that there are certain types of users and endpoints for which this model doesn't work. So I'll give you an example. I have a phone in my pocket, right? If I wanted to connect my lab in Nokia or in Nuage and do some work, I can't do this because they don't let me install a VPN client on iOS. It, it violates our, our corporate policy. Um, and um, so I have really no way of connecting to, to the corporate WAN. So I'm, I'm, I'm underserved by the SD-WAN solution because there's not really a good solution for mobile devices, for mobile routers. And then when you consider IoT, again, there's a gap there. How do you connect a sensor or a camera, right? So is there a way that we can offer SD-WAN services for uh, make it like a universal service? So can we, can we bring in mobile and fixed access devices? So the question really is, do we need a CPE? Is the SD-WAN gateway a critical part of the solution, or there's a way we can avoid that? And this is where I'd like to introduce the service edge. And I'm going to make the case today that not for all endpoints, but for a vast majority of endpoints, you don't need an SD-WAN gateway. SD-WAN gateways are expensive. <laughs> they're difficult to manage. You have to maintain, monitor, upgrade them. What if there's a way that you could offer the same service from the edge, right, without the use of an SD-WAN gateway? What if I could take those network functions and I could move them into the service provider POP? And I could give you the same SSE, the same SASE, uh, in, a, in a more universal, more streamlined way. So this is the service edge solution. So what is, what is it really about? It's about kind of uh, a change of mindset. It's changing the way we think about this problem. So, and the current way of thinking about it is this heavy CP approach, where you know if we need more features, we need more bandwidth, we just put a bigger box, right? That's the traditional networking model, right? Where all these functions are distributed, right? And you have a so you in in, in typical branch, you might have a router, you might have SD WAN CPE, you might have uh, you know an ONT, so a lot of different devices, and now you have to manage them, you have to control them, and so on. But a lot of these functions, they actually work better offering them from the edge, right? Like your VPN, your routing, your layer three, your firewall, your advanced security. Why do we need to do them at the branch? Because the traffic anyway is going to the service provider pop. So our, our proposal is we're gonna take these functions, we're gonna virtualize them, and we're gonna run them as a service in the service provider pop. And that is basically our proposal today. So I just want to go back to this slide quickly. So we do actually have two solutions. We have one for fixed access, which is for you know, DSL, cable, um, you know, other types of broadband technology. Um, and we have one for mobile. 
I only have 20 minutes, so I'll focus on the mobile solution, but we do have a booth, uh, New Ash Networks from Nokia. You're welcome to come see us there, and we can present uh, the fixed uh, solution as well. Okay, so how do we solve the mobile problem today? So if you have a mobile phone, and you want to connect securely to an enterprise WAN, what are your options today? Well, you have two options. You could install a VPN client or an agent on that mobile device, and that is definitely possible. It does work. It doesn't work for me personally, because Nokia doesn't allow it, but it, it, it can work as a solution. But it doesn't, it's not a ubiquitous solution, right? Uh, it doesn't work on IoT devices. It doesn't work on you know, self-driving cars or in the metaverse, et cetera, right? Uh, so it's not a ubiquitous solution. And the other problem is your traffic is being tromboned, right? You don't have the full mesh solution. Your traffic will always go to a VPN concentrator. Uh, and so it's a suboptimal traffic path. Now, there's a better solution called private APN, and this has been around for years, where a mobile service provider will basically create a private wireless network uh, for a specific enterprise, and then stitch, uh, stitch, uh, stitch that into the enterprise one. Again, a good solution. It's ubiquitous. It doesn't require any uh, agent or gateway, and it does connect you to the enterprise WAN, but you don't get the benefits of SD-WAN and SASE, right? Because this is a separate uh, cloud or island, and so you don't have the Univite service plane, uh, the full visibility and control. So how can we improve on uh, these two models? Before we talk about how we improve on them, let's talk about you know, what's wrong with the private APN model. Aside from the fact that it's not SD-WAN SASE, it has a lot of manual touch points, right? You need to configure a separate instance per enterprise in the, in the 4G, 5G packet core. You need a separate uh, firewall instance. You need a separate IP core instance. And then you have to stitch it uh, into the existing enterprise WAN. So you lose that uh, unified uh, single pane of glass. So how does Service Edge solve this problem? So the first thing we do is we say, what, what is SD-WAN good at, right? Uh, SD-WAN is really good at network virtualization. Like we take transports, which we call them underlays, and we, we slice them and dice them, right? We do dynamic network slicing. Uh, we almost do like, you know, SD-WAN is doing what MPLS did for IP. Right? It's virtualizing the network. So why don't we do that in the packet core? What prevents us from that? Like if we put a rack there and we have specialized software, why can't we create, just have the service provider create one uh, private APN or private wireless network, and then we'll use SDN technology to dynamically virtualize that, uh, make it multi-tenancy, secure it, and connect it uh, through, you know, through SASE um, you know, to the enterprise WAN with, with the security of SSE. Again, that's very possible, and this is our proposal here. This is our solution. So this is an on-prem solution. It's a, it's a fully managed service, and we sit between the packet core and the IP core in the service provider POP, and we provide full SASE uh, functionality for any type of mobile endpoint, uh, whether fix, whether uh, you know, mobile phone, tablet, IoT mobile router, uh, 4G or 5G uh, technology, um, and all of this without requiring any SD-WAN gateway. And you don't have to do anything with your phone. You just like you plug in your SIM, and it just works. You're connected to the enterprise WAN. Okay, so just a bit more detail on the solution. So uh, if you look on the on the far right, you'll see the mobile endpoints, and on the far right, uh, f sorry, far left, mobile endpoints, or your, your far left and on the far right, uh, the enterprise WAN, right? So what we do basically um, is we take a single VRF, single private APN, all the enterprises will connect to that same private APN, uh, single firewall instance, obviously for security, and then we use our software, our SDN software, to do dynamic network slicing, virtualization, multi-tenancy, uh, connectivity and security, and all of that is offered as a service, and the, the end customer manage that, manages that through a self-service uh, portal. So in that way, in this manual um, you know, uh, process with a lot of touch points uh, of you know, um, creating private network services uh, over a wireless network is now fully automated uh, and fully self-service. And a lot of people are going to say, well, what about uh, you know, larger branches? What about my headquarters? What about multiple uplinks? What about multi-path routing? What about advanced features that reality are, are difficult to offer uh, from the service edge. So this solution does not replace SD-WAN. It simply makes SD-WAN more universal and more ubiquitous. So you can extend it 
to a lot of endpoints where it's not possible or too expensive or too difficult to have an SD-WAN gateway. So you can think of broadband, work from home, uh, even at this conference, right? If, so if we all have phones or we had a mobile router here, uh, that wouldn't, we, you know, we don't want to carry gateways with us, right? So we can very easily use this uh, to connect to secure uh, enterprise uh, data networks. Yeah. Another benefit of this is if you think about the cloud, and a lot of applications are moving to the cloud, uh, where's the best place to get cloud connectivity from? Right? Where's the most efficient way? It's actually from the uh, service provider POP. Like all the service providers, uh, they have direct, uh, direct routing and fast path connectivity to all the public cloud and um, you know, SaaS providers. Right? So why not leverage this uh, optimal connectivity to allow the end user, which is the enterprise, through self-service portal to just enter in their credentials and then create policy from their mobile or fixed endpoints into the public cloud uh, with obviously the full, full security protection. So that's something that we can do very efficiently with Service Edge. And there's, there's two more points I want to cover. Is some people will say, okay, what about encryption? What about security? Isn't the, see, there's no gateway. So how about the connectivity from the mobile endpoint into the service provider POP? Well, that's a private network, right? We've traditionally, we've never encrypted data over private networks. We only encrypt data over public networks. So in the end, if you consider this like MPLS, like a private network, then in reality, there's no need for encryption up to the service edge. Then the service edge, when you're connecting to external networks, which could be untrusted, at that point, you can make a decision whether you need to encrypt or not. But there's no need to encrypt uh, up to the service edge. And in terms of the traffic flow, this is the optimal traffic flow, right? Because all the mobile traffic anyway has to go to the P gateway or the UPF. There's no way around that, right? So if you think about edge cloud applications or ultra low latency, you cannot do any better than this in terms of performance, right? So this is the optimal traffic flow in terms of, of performance. Let's talk briefly about uh, IoT. So in the world today, there are billions of IoT devices, IoT devices, and you know, if Mark Zuckerberg succeeds and we're all wearing headsets, there'll be, <laughs> there'll be billions more, right? So we need to solve the IoT security problem, right? These IoT devices, they're very basic. A lot of them are sensors or cameras. They don't have an operating system. They don't have antivirus, anti-malware. They don't have even a firewall on them. They're completely exposed. And that's why every day, millions of them are being hacked, right? Because they're completely vulnerable. So it's up to the network to protect these devices, right? And most of these devices today are moving to 4G and 5G connectivity. So it really has to be the wireless network that protects them, right? So by, by putting the service edge solution in the service provider POP, you can provide all the benefits of SSE and all the security uh, that we talked about in the conference to these billions of IoT devices through all through a self-service portal, self-managed. Um, this is something that previously was not, was not possible. Now, how do we do the uh, security for IoT and other uh, mobile devices? Well, security is about two things. It's about uh, who you say you are and who you actually are, right? So when I go to the airport, I, pretend my pa I present my passport, what are they doing? They're going to check potentially biometrics. They're going to see how I look like. They're comparing who I present myself as to who I really am. And then they're looking at my behavior, my travel history, what I've done in the past, and then they make a determination, am I a security threat or not? Do I need to go to another room for in, in enhanced interrogation? This is the same thing we're going to do with IoT. Because we have an integration with the BSS system and the AAA system in, this, in the source provider core network, we know all of the metadata. We know who this IoT device is going to be. So if it's a traffic camera, we know the GPS location. We know the type of traffic it should be sending. We know its serial number, we know its uh, phone number, we know all the information about it. Um, and what we do is when that device authenticates against the network, we will uh, keep monitoring it and we keep profiling it, right? I don't recommend profiling people, but I think it's fine to profile um, you know, devices. And so how do we profile it? We, we have it in, in the DPI engine on the data plane, as it sends traffic, we keep collecting data about it. And then we determine at some point that this is not really a security camera or the security camera's GPS location is changing, means that it's moving. Security cameras don't walk, right? So that means that it's been compromised, and so we can apply a policy uh, to lock it out. So the beauty beautiful of this deep integration 
uh, into the service provider network is you have so much information about the endpoint that you can provide a level of security that previously was not possible. Because we know the, the management plane, we know the control plane, we know the data path, and we can correlate all of these together to do a very advanced level of, of security and protection. Okay. So in summary, what are we doing here? We're saying that SD-WAN is a great technology, uh, SSE is great, SASE is great, but it's forgotten about a lot of endpoints. Billions of endpoints like mobile devices, like broadband home users, the, they're underserved. And for these users, you can't put an SD-WAN gateway, just not possible. So why don't we use integration with the BNG or the packet core to provide all the benefits that, you know, the single pane of glass, the visibility, the control, the policy, the security, why don't we do that at the service edge in a way that creates a unified service layer across mobile, fixed, and, and branch endpoints? Yeah. And this is the, my presentation.